Okay, here is the door object we're going to set up with a double hinge. Uh, if we uh, look at the model here, you can see we have the door itself, which in this case is just a stretched cube with the texture map applied to it. But you can make that as fancy as you want. And we also have the door frame here, which is oops, just here to get a sense of the environment the door is going to be placed in. It's here more to help us line up, and uh, we're not even going to export it. So let's begin by just hiding that and getting into setting up the armature for our door. So let's begin by pressing Shift A and clicking on single bone to create a simple armature. We're going to come over here to the armature tab, make sure viewport display is open and click in front so that you can see the bone. And now we're just going to uh, move this over so it's uh, horizontal so it just doesn't get in the way of the other bones we're going to set up. Um, that is, let's come over here to the uh, items tab, click on tail Z, set that to zero, and let's also set the roll to zero, just so this is uh, sort of neat and out of the way. Okay, now we're going to create a double hinge, one that's responsible for opening the door this way, and a second hinge to let us open the door that way. Now the reason why we're doing that and not just using a single hinge is so that the uh, back corner of this uh, door doesn't get buried in the wall, which can ruin the illusion. Uh, if you just put a single hinge down the middle, then either you're going to have to deal with your door clipping into the wall, or you're going to have to start the door so far away from the wall that it's going to look like it's not even attached to the wall. So let's get rid of those annotations. All right, and let's create our two hinges. Uh, so let's start by clicking on our root bone. I'm gonna press Shift D to duplicate that and bring it up here. And we're going to make sure you are in vertex snap mode. And I'm gonna click on the X axis, hold down Control key, and then drag over this corner here. So it's snapped to the uh, that point on the X axis. We're gonna do the same thing with the Y. Hold down control and then go over top of that point. And now this bone is perfectly aligned to this front side of the door. Now we're going to press Shift D to make a duplicate. Move it over here. Hold down control. Now we're going to mouse over that corner. So now our second bone is perfectly aligned on this side of the door. So let's give our bones some names. Let's call this one hinge. Uh, underscore CW for clockwise because this hinge is going to be responsible for opening in the clockwise direction and let's call this one hinge CCW because this one is going to be opening in the counterclockwise direction as seen from the top. Okay one last thing let's get the parenting set up here. Uh, click on that bone and click on that bone, control P, uh, keep offset, uh, so that if I click on this one and move it, you can now see that dotted line shows that there is a parent relationship uh, between those two bones. Now let's click on this one, click on our root bone, control P, to, and keep offset. So we have a simple hierarchy from our root bone to our open uh, clockwise bone, to our open counterclockwise bone. Uh, one last thing we're going to do, let's click on the open counterclockwise bone, uh, go back into object mode, select our door, select our armature, and press control P. We're going to, this is to attach our mesh to our armature. Uh, we're going to select parent to bone. The reason why uh, we selected this bone, uh, the open counterclockwise bone, uh, when we were still in armature mode, so that when we did the parenting, our object is going to be bound to this bone and only this bone. And because this bone is at the end of the um, chain, if we go into pose mode, see that if we move this one, the uh, door is going to come with it however we turn it. But if we move this bone, it's also going to come with it because the counterclockwise bone is a child of this bone.
Okay, let's add some constraints to these bones so that they're easier to work with. Uh, let's start by turning on the axes in the display so we can see what they are. And let's also put the mesh into wireframe view just so it's a little bit easier to look through those bones. Okay, uh, now, right now, by default, these bones don't have any constraints on them. So you can move them anywhere, rotate them in whatever direction you want. This is not what you want for a door. Uh, we uh, are not going to be moving the door at all, so let's click on the item tab. Uh, let's lock the location so that we cannot move it with the G key. Uh, let's change the rotation to XYZ Euler, then lock down the X and Y axes so we can only rotate around the Z. And we're not going to be scaling this either, so let's lock down all the scales. So now when we go to rotate it, it's going to move exclusively along the z-axis. Let's do the same thing with the other bone too. Lock down the location, change that to XYZ Euler, lock down the X and Y, and lock down the scale as well. And now when we rotate this hinge, it is going to only rotate around the z-axis. And if you look at this from the top view, a little bit more obvious why this is useful. With the double hinge, we're going to be rotating around these two points independently. So if we rotate like that, you can see how the door is rotating around this point. So as long as we're rotating this direction with this hinge, the door is going to be nice and flush with whatever surface is right here without penetrating through it. And the same thing if we want to open the door this way, with this hinge, again, we're nice and flush with the wall without actually penetrating to it. So as long as we use this door when we're opening this hinge when we're opening clockwise, and this hinge when we're opening counterclockwise, we're going to have a nice uh, door that is perfectly flush with the wall and doesn't penetrate into it. In fact, let's bring back our model. Go back into pose mode there. Whoops, on the armature. You can see it opens nicely from this angle. And also from this angle. Okay, our object is now rigged. Let's start animating it. Let's click on the Animation tab to go into Animation Mode. Let's zoom in a little bit, and let's just hop back into Object Mode and bring back our door frame here so we can see it. Okay, let's click on our armature, go back into Pose Mode, and we're going to want to add five animations to this door. One with it just being closed, which we're going to use when we uh, first load it up in our scene, just so the door starts in a closed state one animation to open it clockwise, one to close it clockwise, one to open it counterclockwise, and the other to close it counterclockwise. So let's start by clicking, uh, make sure you're in the action editor down here. By default that will be on dope sheet, but just change that to action editor. And make sure the playhead is at the start by clicking the uh, left button here. All right, uh, let's start by creating a new action by clicking on new and set that to closed. And this first action is going to be very simple. I'm just going to click on both of those hinge bones and press I and click on rotation. Actually, let's open that tab first so you can see what's going on. Press I and go to rotation. And that is going to keyframe both of those in the closed position. Uh, and we're going to click on stash to store that animation. OK, now we're going to want the uh, animation that opens it clockwise. Click on that button for a new action. We're going to call this open underscore CW for open clockwise. Uh, click on the hinge CW joint, and uh, we're going to press I rotation to keyframe that at frame one with the zero degree rotation. Then what we're going to want to do is go all the way to the end of our animation, which uh, I decided is going to be frame 12, and going to press R to rotate. 
rotate that door open until it is in about the open position that you want it and press I and rotation to lock in that keyframe on frame 12. And now if you press play, you can see that animation is opening that door uh, pretty much the way you want to see it uh, in your final game. So you can press the spacebar to stop the animation. Uh, so you can press stash to store that one. And let's just uh, bring it back open uh, by clicking on this down menu here and going to OpenCW. Now uh, that is the door opening animation, but we're also going to want a door closed. And uh, we're going to do that by duplicating this and then reversing it. So click on this uh, new action button to duplicate the open CW. We're going to rename that to close clockwise. And then what we're going to want to do is swap these two keyframes. So let's start by selecting the last keyframes here by just clicking on the top button or the top frame. Let's move them out of the way. Click on those guys, move them to the last frame and click on these guys and move them to the first frame. There we go. And now you can see that open animation has turned into a closed animation. And one last thing just for safety, let's go back to the first frame here. Uh, this guy, uh, we're going to want to press I and rotation just to make sure that this guy is locked at zero. We do not want both of these um, bones to be rotating at the same time. We want either the clockwise hinge to be moving or the counterclockwise hinge to be moving, not both. By keyframing this guy at zero, you can guarantee that this guy is going to stay at zero. Okay, um, that is the open clockwise. Let uh, us press A to select all bones, go into pose mode, clear transform all. So we're now back at the rest position. Now we're going to want to do the same thing, but opening counterclockwise. Uh, let's press stash to stash that closing animation, and now let's start a new one. Click on new, go to open underscore CW for open clockwise. Uh, press that arrow to go to the first play position. This time we're going to count. click on the counterclockwise hinge and press I and go down to rotation to lock it into zero degrees at frame one. Go to our last frame, rotate that into what looks like a good open position. Press I, click on rotation to make that keyframe. And now if you play that back, you have the open counterclockwise. In fact, uh, I think we spelled that wrong. That should have two C's in it for counterclockwise. And uh, let's play that again. And all right, press dash to save that. Click down here. Let's reload the open counterclockwise. We are going to uh, press that button to duplicate it. Uh, change the name to close. CCW. And now we're just going to swap these two keyframes like we did the last time. on that. Let's move those guys out of the way. Move these guys to the end. Move those guys to the start. And now that open, open counterclockwise is now closing. And uh, one last thing. Let's just click on that guy and go back to the start and keyframe that at zero degrees just as a safety so that we know that this bone is always going to be stuck at zero degrees. And those are, uh, press dash to save that. And those are our five animations. The only thing we need to do now is export this to our favorite, favorite game editor. Okay, and uh, one more thing before I forget. Make sure that your door object here ends in dash col. Otherwise, uh, it won't generate a collision body for it when we import it into uh, Godot. Uh, other game engines might have different conventions, but uh, if you're importing this into Godot and you want this door to be solid, make sure the name ends in dash col.
Okay, we've exported our scene. Let's start bringing it into our game engine. We're going to be using Godot here. So let's begin by creating a new scene and click on 3D scene there. And now let's click and drag our door model into the scene. And let's click on the node, come over here to transform and reset that to the origin. Uh, next, what we're, we will uh, right click on door, come down here to editable children. Uh, so that we have access to the animation player. If you click on that, you can see all the animations uh, that we created in Blender have now been imported into Godot. Now, uh, what we want to do is take these animations and turn them into a state machine. So the last thing we're going to do, click on the root up here, right click, add node, and let's come down here to animation tree which is the node that we're going to create our state machine in. Uh, make sure that is selected. Come over here to the inspector panel. For tree root, we're going to click on empty. Come down here to new animation node state machine. Uh, this is what's going to contain the state machine. And under animation player, uh, click on assign and then click on animation player. So our state machine is going to draw from the animation player that we exported. And one last thing, let's click on active so that the animation player is running uh, in the scene. And so we can actually see what the uh, state machine is doing as we build it. And let's also save our scene. Just going to press Control S and let's just call that door. Uh, .tscm, let's put it in the scenes folder. In the scenes folder. I, okay, I think we're already there. Uh, yeah, and there's our uh, door scene right there. So uh, let's begin by adding a few states to the state machine. First of all, let's add an animation closed. And uh, we're going to come over here to connect mode and we'll connect from the scene to the closed state so that as soon as our scene begins, uh, as soon as we load our model into the scene, we're going to immediately jump from the start state over here to the closed state just to make sure that the door is closed. Uh, now that's not too exciting. Right now what it's doing is it's playing this closed animation, which if you remember is just a single frame. It's uh, playing that over and over again. Uh, but because that's just one frame, that's not actually going to look like anything. It's just going to hold steady in that closed state. So let's make this more interesting. Let's add in one of the closed animations. Let's start by closing our door clockwise. Click back on select mode over there. Let's right click, add animation, uh, open clockwise because we're going to want to start by opening our door clockwise and we're going to then follow that up by closing it clockwise with that state there. And let's add in these links from draw a line from close to open and you see the door open and then we're going to draw a state from open to closed. And there you have the first two states uh, already done. Now, once the door is closed, there's a chance we might want to open the door again. So let's draw a line from closed back to open. And you can see the animation is now getting a little bit excited. Uh, it's moving way too fast and it is hopping immediately from the open state to the closed state. That's because of how these arrows are working. We need to uh, adjust the properties of these transition arrows. So let's click on the top one there. And if you look in the inspector tab, you have the switch uh, area and the advanced area. Under switch mode, we're going to go from immediate to end. So the animation has to completely finish before hopping to the next one. And under advanced, we're going to switch that from auto to enabled. And once in enabled mode, this means we are now taking sort of manual control over it. Uh, instead of it just jumping automatically from one to the next, it's going to wait for uh, an instruction. Either in code, we're going to tell it when to change state, or we can also do it here by clicking on the arrow. And let's uh, fix that guy as well. So we can switch in advance, set this to at end, and switch to enabled. And now the state machine will only transition when we tell it to by clicking on these arrows or, uh, as I said before, encode. 
let's also change this guy. Uh, there's not really any need for at end because it's only a single frame, but we might as well just set it to that to be consistent and set that to enable to, to enabled to, so that uh, it's only going to advance out of this closed state uh, when we instruct it to. Okay, well that is the opening in the clockwise direction. We also want to be able to open in the counterclockwise direction. So let's add in those states. And add in the connections from close to open counterclockwise, from open counterclockwise to close counterclockwise, and then back again. And let's, oops. Let's set those states as well. Uh, advance and switch. It'd be nice if there were a way to uh, set these all at the same time, but I don't know if there's a way to do that. Anyhow, we only have a few of them. Okay, now we can go from open to closed and uh, uh, down on this loop too. Now notice the uh, open CW right now has the red outline around it, which means the state is currently in the uh, open uh, counterclockwise state up here. So if we click down here, it just sort of jumps immediately to it, uh, which is not what we want. We want to be able to go from this somehow down to, to this state here smoothly. So we can do that by drawing some more cross states like this. So Whenever this closed animation is finished playing, uh, the door is in the closed state, which, and once it's closed, we can open it in the clockwise direction or the counterclockwise direction. Both should be fine. So by adding in these extra lines, we're sort of giving our state machine an extra path that can travel. Uh, let's set up those arrows. And now you can see with this little bit more complicated one, it's possible for the uh, logic to take more than one path. So if we want to go from open clockwise to uh, open counterclockwise, uh, it can do that by hopping through the close clockwise node first. So if the door is open one way, we then shut the door. We can then open the door again. And uh, the diagram is going to be smart enough to know it can take this root to go from open to close, from open one way to open the other way. So if we click on that, see it to automatically travel through the close clockwise to get up here. And if we click on this one, you see it was uh, able to figure out it needed to close through, go through this node in order to get back up here again. And we're not going to be leaning on that too heavily in the code that we write, but it's sort of a neat thing that these transition diagrams can do, and it will no, uh, it can automatically chain together animations like that, which uh, I think is kind of interesting. Uh, okay, now we're done setting up our node. Time for the code. Okay, let's click on our root node here and add a script. And uh, door dot. <laughs> I misspelled door. Let's just uh, let's fix that real quick. Okay, let's click on the uh, script button there and uh, door.gd will be fine. Create a new uh, script scene here. And rather than typing all this out, I'm just going to cut and paste uh, some code I've already worked on here. Uh, let me just run through it quickly. Uh, we're gonna start by extending node 3D because that's what this uh, uh, node is. Uh, we're going to set up a cooldown time. This is so that at least one second or uh, whatever amount of time you want passes between uh, clicks on the door. This is just so uh, when a user presses a button, you don't accidentally get several clicks at once within milliseconds of each other, which can cause some strange effects. This, uh, with cooldown time, you're going, going to make sure it's always going to wait at least one second before it processes the next click. The state we're going to use to figure out which state the door is in. The door can be open in the clockwise direction, it can be open in the counterclockwise direction, or it can be closed. When you first load the scene, it's going to be in the closed state, so uh, we're just setting that on this line here. The state machine is going to be uh, this node that we set here in the uh, 
animation tree. This is the uh, tree root. We're just going to grab that here in the ready mode and uh, store that in this local variable just so it's that much easier to access. So uh, that's the ready function there. Down in process, all we're doing is we're subtracting the current delta from the cooldown to keep track of how much time we have left until we're ready to handle the next key press. And down here is the move door function, which is going to make our door work. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is check if we have any time left on the cooldown. Uh, if so, uh, we're just going to return immediately because uh, we're not ready to process anything yet. Otherwise, we're going to reset the cooldown time and then move into the state transition logic of our door. Now, if uh, the door is open in the counterclockwise direction, we're just going to uh, tell the state machine to go immediately to the closed state. We're going to close it in the counterclockwise direction. If the state door is open in the clockwise direction, we're going to close it in the clockwise direction. And uh, the third state is if the door happens to be closed. And if the door is closed, uh, we can open it either clockwise or counterclockwise. But we need to figure out which way. Uh, and that's where this math comes in. We're going to be creating a vector that points from the origin of the door to the origin of whoever's trying to open the door. And uh, that's what the parameter up here is for the source. That is uh, the node of whatever character or whatever thing it is you want to indicate is opening the door. So if we uh, hop back into the 3D view here, uh, and let's uh, let's go to the animation tree. Let's close that door. And in Godot, uh, let's select the root node there. We're going to be using the Z node as the uh, test here. Uh, here's the door in the closed state, and we basically want to know whether the uh, character is standing on the plus side of the Z or the minus side of the Z. And in order to do that, we're going to draw a line from the origin of the door to wherever, wherever our character is. And then we're going to take the dot product of that vector with the Z of the door. And uh, that is going to tell us which side of the door we're on. If you remember uh, your math with the dot product, uh, that is the same thing as taking the cosine of the angle between the vector of where a person's standing and uh, the vector of the door here. If that's positive, then we know that person is on the uh, this side of the door. And if it's negative, we know that the person is standing on the other side of the door. So hopping back here into the script, uh, that's just what we're doing. We're calculating the offset vector, which tells us where our, direct, where our player is standing relative to the door. We take the dot product. If the dot product is less than zero, then we know we're going to open the door in the counterclockwise direction. And that's how you create a two-way door. Now you can always have the door open away from you when you click on it, so it doesn't bang you in the face. So that is the end of this video. I uh, hope you got something useful out of it. Uh, like and subscribe if you would like to see me make more videos about uh, how to do neat things in Blender and Godot. And until next time, thanks for watching.